What's up everyone? Welcome back to Quest Mode. Today we're doing something totally different on the channel. We are having a freeform, unscripted discussion about the Game Award nominations, which were just revealed this past Tuesday ahead of the actual ceremony, which will air in December. And to do that, I actually have a very special guest on the channel. This is actually my first guest I've ever had on Quest Mode. Tony from the YouTube channel Samurai Kibiji is here to talk about some of the more interesting nomination categories. So, Tony, a lot of my viewers may not be familiar with you. Hopefully a lot of them are and they're already subscribed. But if they're not, if you're not, you should be. Um, but for those <laughs> viewers who don't necessarily know who you are, do you want to give yourself a quick introduction? Yeah, thanks, Josh. So, hi, like you said, my channel is Samurai Kibiji, but my name is Tony. And I just basically have grown up with things like games, anime, and movies, and want to encourage you to be geek proud awesome every single week. And I love freaking video games, and I'm so excited to talk with Josh here about the Game Awards. Thank you so much for having me, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. And thanks for being on the channel, but more importantly, thanks for inviting me to do this collaboration. This was all your idea, so thanks to you. I'm we're excited. Both here. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it should be a, a very interesting t discussion today. What we're doing yeah. is we're talking about six categories and you may be asking why just six well there's a whole other half to this discussion that's going to be posted over on uh, Samurai KBG's channel so definitely check that out it's uh, going to be a really interesting discussion all the way around and uh, Tony was there anything yeah yeah two vids so there... I'm just I'm just pointing them two parts <laughs> Yeah, so this is part one, I guess, or part two, depending on where you started. Um, but overall, Tony, I mean, it's an interesting year because there's not a real clear-cut, you know, uh, favorite to win game of the year or sweep the show like there have been in years past. I guess that is subjective. That may depend on... I was going to say, that's very opinion. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're, you're right about that. I think I feel like that's the general consensus in the industry right now. But was there anything in particular that struck you about the nominations uh, that came out? So I'm going to try to save something for this the other part. Like you said, we're going to have another part on my channel. But for here, I just want to bring up that I'm very questioning, was Star Wars eligible for anything? <laughs> because cause I really, I, I looked at previous years for 2016, 17, and 18, and the eligib eligibility window is up to like the 25th, averagely, for a public release. So this was released like over 10 days beforehand. It's been getting great reviews. Not sure why that wasn't nominated for anything if it was eligible. And uh, th that's kind of one of the big things. I'll save another thing for my channel. But what do you think? Is there anything else or, or if you have a comment off that? Um, yeah, well, I, I, I heard that it was actually the 15th. Um, so I don't know if uh, 25th or huh. the 15th. But I do think that it had to have been the cutoff date or that maybe people just didn't have enough time to play the game. I, I don't know. But that yeah, did strike me kind of disappointed that that game didn't make it. But um, what struck me most was that Death Stranding took in 10 nominations. And it has more nominations than any other game. And I do I'm think I'm so it glad merits... you brought that up because that was something I thought of too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does It does merit some nominations. Don't get me wrong. I mean, there's de there's mm -hmm. a lot that Death Stranding does great. Does. But I don't think it is... Um, I, I mean, I won't get too much into my opinions, but at least not yet. But it did surprise me that that got as many nominations as it did. Uh, and there are a few other things, yeah, that we'll talk about on your channel as well. But, yeah. but overall, that was the biggest thing. So... And I agree. I definitely agree. And we'll get to, we'll definitely get to that with certain categories on my channel too. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so anyways, though, yeah. So let's get into it. the The first category that I want to bring up because I've definitely got some opinions here is the action game of the year. So uh, this is a game. This is a genre that a ton of people play. It's probably one of the most popular genres. Uh, the games they nominated were Apex Legends, Astral Chain, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Devil May Cry 5, Gears 5, and Metro Exodus. So, I mean, what, what strikes me about this is that this is one of the uh, categories where they nominated six games, and I think that's good because this really meshes a lot of genres together. There's first-person yeah. shooters. There's the stylish, you know, action genre, I guess they call it. Because they got there's... rid of shooters for this. Yeah. Right. So they're all kind of in one. So it's good that they nominated six games, and... Um, I mean, I know my favorite of this bunch, the one that I hope will win, is Astral Chain. I just love that game. It was, uh, it, it actually is sitting right now. It, I, I'd have to debate it, but I, it might be my game of the year. Um, Ooh. <laughs> yeah, so, and um, one thing 
to make it a little interesting is I played both Devil May Cry 5 and Gears 5, and those just did not click for me. So I'm glad that they're nominated. I know a lot of people love those games, but not my cup of tea. But uh, I'm curious what you think of these nominations. So my kind of big surprise for this category is uh, that Metro Exodus got nominated. Not because I don't think it deserves to like not be nominated or whatever, but it's it's just such a... I haven't played it from things I've heard and seen of it. It seems much more like a when you get into an encounter, it's stressful, you know, but it's like they're not too often and they're not super, super huge. I hear there's various kinds of combat, so maybe that's why. And maybe it's just because of that very few encounter like thing about it. But I was just kind of surprised to see it in this category. But um, and the only thing I think, right, that Astro Chain got nominated for um, and I'm kind of glad because it's a good like hack and slash situation. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be sharing who are should and woulds yet. It's yeah, let's tough, do it. But I, I don't think we should wait. No, I, for me, I, I'm i going all in with this one. But my both like should and would is Devil May Cry 5. I, I, I personally haven't played it, but it's just like the things I've seen about it and I have friends that have and I've watched some gameplay of it. I'm just like, this is so hardcore. And, and it's what Devil May Cry 5, do, it's what the Devil May Cry series does best is it's action and everything. I love Gears 5, and I loved other games in here, but I, I think Devil May Cry 5 is my shoe in What do you think? Yeah, I think Devil May Cry 5 is uh, probably the most likely to win this, um, just because, I won't spoil it, but just because where it's appeared. Um, actually, I'm not sure if it was nominated for Game of the Year or not, but in any case, I feel it like the not. conversation... <laughs> yeah, I feel like the conversation around Devil May Cry 5 all year is that it's, it, it's like one of the best games of the year. And I feel like everything else on this list, Apex Legends, I feel like the interest has kind of dropped out on that. Call of Duty, it's, I don't know, it's, it, I don't want to uh, disparage it too much, but it's Call of Duty. I don't think it's a game of the year type of thing. And in this category, it's such a big category, I don't see it winning. So I, I think Devil May Cry 5 makes sense to win it, but my vote would be if, you know, should and would. Uh, should would be uh, Astral Chain, will win, yeah. I think, is Devil May Cry 5. The next category I want to talk about, unless you have anything extra to talk about on, on the nope. action game front. Uh, this one's kind of near and dear to my heart. Uh, anybody who's been watching my channel for a long time knows I, I play a lot of indie games. Um, so, in the best independent game. Um, and the nominees in this category are Baba Is You, Disco Elysium, Katana Zero, Outer Wilds, and Untitled Goose Game. And I just want to give myself a pat on the back for not saying Outer Worlds there. Um, <laughs> I'm proud of you too. Yeah, I do it all the yeah. time. Don't worry. It's going to happen. But, uh, and you know, it's as many happen. indie games as I play and as much as I like indie games, I was really surprised that I actually haven't played a good number of these, you know, Disco Elysium just yeah. came out and the reviews on that game are just out of this world. That's one game that's actually making me wonder if I should break out my PC. I don't play a lot of PC mm -hmm. games, but that game might do it. And I have to say of the games I've played on this, um, you know, I think... I played a little bit of Outer Outer Wilds, and I I can see why people love that game. Certain mechanics in it were a little t tough for me, a little difficult, but it's a really kind of it's kind of like an old school adventure game mixed with this like space exploration of almost like a Mass Effect style space exploration. So really cool. I don't know if you played any of these or if you have any thoughts. So so I'm not too much about the indie scene. I just still I pay attention to what people say and and so on like things heard about it. And yeah, I've been hearing crazy stuff about Disco like for real. But um but yeah, actually half the nominees here I hadn't uh heard of actually. And I I personally think this is Outer Wilds thing to take, but I'm actually kind of like a cross turn here between Outer Wilds and Disco. Because Outer Wilds has some momentum in other award shows right now with the amount of things it gets nominated for and stuff. But Disco, just review-wise, is killing it. And um, they're both so unique. And that's really... I don't really have a should and would or whatever for this. But I, I, it's just a toss-up for me for Outer Wilds and Disco. Yeah. Um, and I also got to give a shout out untitled goose game. That's the whole reason I love indie games is because yes. And I, can... I forgot to point that out too. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I think that's great that that got nominated. Yeah. And yeah I think I even think for like uh upcoming studio or something like that, their fresh studio, I think they got nominated for that too. So that's cool. Yeah. It was, it was a bit short. Actually, it was really short and that's why I wouldn't give it the, the, the award, but in terms of what it does, just no big publisher is going to take a risk on a game like that. And that's why indie games are so awesome. You just see crazy exactly. stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's cool to see it just get recognized. You know, it doesn't have, yeah. that's my point with all these awards. You don't necessarily have to win it. It's just cool to get recognized, you know? Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. 
So did you have did you have like a decision for that category? <laughs> Um, I, I would have to, you know, even though uh, of all the indie games I played, I, I actually wish that um, uh, uh, Plague Tale Innocence, which I think is an indie game, it's kind of got a triple A feel, but that was probably my favorite indie game. I wish that had gotten nominated here. So uh, of these five, I'd have to give it to the, the Outer Wilds. Okay. Um, so next is my favorite genre of the ones that I'm covering, the one that I probably spend the most time playing. And that's the action adventure genre, and I feel like these are the kind of the big AAA tentpole. We're getting to the very hype categories now. Yeah, tentpole <laughs> games that a lot of people play and a lot of people look forward to. So that Star Wars was not a part of. Star Wars was not a part of. <laughs> well, not so. Star Wars was not a part of it, but kicking off the games that were nominated, Borderlands Three, I thought was a very interesting choice for this particular category. Uh, the next games that were nominated: Control, Death Stranding, Resident Evil Two. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, and Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Um, so yeah, I was, I don't know if it's because they couldn't squeeze it into the action game category, but I don't think of Borderlands as an action adventure at all. Um, it's just kind of a pure shooter to me, but uh, maybe I'm uh, alone in that. But did you have any, any I, favorites? I, I somewhat disagree. Like, I understand, but I, but I also, like, get the sense that this is... When I think of an action adventure game, I think of it as something that you are exploring in a sense. You have some kind of big landscape to traverse and it's somewhat it doesn't have to be an open world, but you know it has that feel of like I'm progressing in this world and am like leveling up and so on. And I think Borderlands 3 does do that. So me personally, I'm I'm cool with it. Um otherwise though, I'm I understand a lot of things here like I was actually kind of surprised to see Control here, to be honest. Yeah, um, Control was one of my favorite games of this year. Um, I think in if this were last year, Control probably wouldn't have been part of the conversation. No. Um, <laughs> but for, for at least the first half of the year was really slow, and this came out, I think, in August, so right at the end of that period, and mm -hmm. it was just nice to get something that uh, was this full... Uh, third-person action-adventure experience. And I have to say, man, the shooting mechanics, just the combat mechanics in that game were, like, really, really good. I was a big fan of Control. Glad to see that it got the nomination. And, yeah, I um, I think, like, Death Stranding, again, I think it probably deserves the nomination in this category. I'd be shocked if it... Well, I shouldn't say I'd be shocked if it wins. I'll be disappointed if it wins. Um, I'm kind. I'm pretty much the same there. I definitely don't think Death Stranding as well. I don't think that should win. But my personal pick here is is uh, Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. I think that game is, it's 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 literally, it, one, it is an adventure to behold, and it's got a very unique style to it as well. I'm, not, I'm trying not to think of like other categories here, but literally just in the sense of both an action adventure, the combat's super engaging, the, the places you see are gorgeous, and the way that From Software produced this world and enemies that you have to go through, I think it's an adventure to behold. Uh, I would agree. Um, anything from I haven't been a fan of all of From Software games, but the ones that I have played, I mean, Bloodborne is one of my favorite PlayStation Four exclusives, hands down. And Sekiro is similar in that the the world that it builds is just amazing. I love how their games encourage um, exploration. Unlike they're almost, it's almost like a Metroidvania style of exploration that they uh, yeah. encourage in a way that few games get right. Yeah. I, I have, I have to agree. I think that that's probably the game that will take home the award. The next category. So we're getting out of the genres here and into more, uh, uh, just different kind of, a different kind of nomination here, the performance category, best performance. I'm really glad that some of these people got nominated here. Uh, we have Ashley Birch as, uh, I'm going to try and say this Pavati. Holcomb in The Outer Worlds. Now, that's a game I didn't play, so if I butchered her name there, uh, forgive me. Um, then we have Courtney Hope as Jesse Faden in Control. Laura Bailey as Kate Diaz in Gears 5. Mads Mikkelsen as Cliff in Death Stranding. Matthew Peretta as Dr. Casper Darling in Control. And lastly, Norman Reedus as Sam Porter Bridges in Death Stranding. So, uh, again, a, a category where we have six nominations instead of just five. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, the ones that I have seen here, I, I mean, I, I love Death Stranding for the performances. Actually, that's probably my favorite part of the whole game. I think that and you got to recognize the amount of cast that that game got together too. Oh yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. I mean, you're dealing with, uh, like 
uh, almost like A-list actors, really, in Hollywood. Tons. So yeah. you know that the talent is there, and uh, and they do. They bring it. it the, the, the performances are good. Um, I will say the one omission, I wouldn't have actually chosen Norman Reedus because he's very quiet in the game. He doesn't say a lot. Troy Baker. I actually agree with you on that. Yeah. yeah. And I haven't even played the game, but just like from things I've been hearing, like Norman Reedus isn't really a highlight in the game. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and Tr- Troy Baker steals the the show in any scene he's in. Like you can't help but just pay attention to him. So I would have nominated him as well. But like him, maybe over Norman, perhaps. <laughs> yes, yeah. That's but it's what tough because that game has a lot of I bet best really good performances in it, which is it why does. I got two. But it's like yep. yeah, I see why Norman being in might be kind of odd. Yeah, yeah. And if I had to guess who will win it, I, I would actually guess Mads Mikkelsen probably. Uh, not only is his performance good, he's just like. He's just kind of cool. <laughs> you <know>? um, <laughs> He's just kind of cool. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, you a... well, so this category, I, I kind of refer a lot to just things I've seen of their things because I truly believe you've played more than me. And it's hard for s- stuff like performances because you really need to spend the experience with the game to really get a sense of it. All you can do is just hear what other people are saying. Um so this one I'm just kind of being a bit random with, and i just been hearing a lot of kind of Tour de Force stuff with Control this year. And and I refer to it as literally that. It's like a Tour de Force, which just means like it's not necessarily something mainstream that people are loving, but it's a very like critic favorite kind of a thing. And uh, because of that, I'm just, I feel like, I think it was Courtney Hope or something. I think she has probably a good shot, and I'll just put her down for playing Jesse in Control. Um, yeah, and I have to say, uh, having and played I see some the game, scenes as well. She mentally like conflicts with herself, self, whatever. So she gets yeah. like a unique way of her character being told as well. So that's another kind of highlight. There's so a I, lot. I'll say that. There's a lot of inner monologue, yeah, in in yeah. Uh, control. So there is that. And I will say, between those two control actors, I definitely think that Courtney Hope uh, gave the better performance. Uh, not that. Uh, is it Matthew Peretta? Not that he gave a bad performance, but definitely Jesse Faden, the main character of the game, uh, was did a great job. Um, and I, I will give a shout out to The Outer Worlds. I haven't played it, but I know that that game does humor and it does it well. I just want to give a shout out to that game for that reason. I just love it when games get humor right. And uh, so that's one of the reasons I really still want to play that game. So What's next, next? Up, yeah, next is multiplayer. Uh, and so this one, the... Nominations were Apex Legends, Borderlands 3, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Tetris 99, and Tom Clancy's The Division. And I don't know what your experience is with multiplayer games, but I'm going to kick this one over to you because I am I have played some of these games, but I'm not multiplayer is not my specialty. I would love to kick this off because I love multiplayer. Um, and actually, I have an interesting note about this category being that I was kind of debating with a friend of mine, is multiplayer purely the online experience or is it the experience of just being like playing with other people literally multiple players because if that was the case and local play was allowed i was like why is smash ultimate not here why like that makes no sense because it's local gameplay yeah it's phenomenal it's online is not and that's why i'm saying if it's purely for online then i get it but if it includes local oh why is it not here um but that being said, so I just assume it's purely based on online experiences, and uh, I think these are all great nominations, honestly. I was really surprised to see Tetris 99 here, personally. Um, I think it kind of deserves to be here, in a sense, because it is cool how they did it. Um, uh, but I just, I, I think this is Apex Legends' show to win this year. Like, Apex Legends has kind of had this great momentum continuously, and it's interesting because... I think all the multiplayers nominated, they are also nominated for best, um, like, studio feedback or something. So that's another yeah. reason uh, that they got nominated for this. And Apex Legends just keeps, like, trying to add this stuff. Um, was Fortnite in this again? No, it wasn't nominated. No, it was not. Which, yeah. to me, you know, on that front, I'm kind of surprised Fortnite. I'm not a Fortnite player, but I do follow it, and I do know that they are – pretty much setting the industry standard for um, how to continue evolving their game to keep players' interest and the way that they... And out, that's they why it's nominated out. for Best Ongoing. It yeah, is. It's and that's, that's a good ongoing, That's so. a really good point. I don't know. I, I understand why all these games are here. None of them make me go, yeah, that makes total sense. Um, but just Apex Legends, I think Respawn knocked it out of the park with. And that was like a free game at first that 
that I was seeing raving reviews about. Everybody that I know that played it was loving it, and they still keep adding content to it. I'm still seeing friends that are playing it versus like the other games listed here. And that came out at the beginning of the year, which was crazy. So um, my, my pick here is Apex Legends, but you go ahead. So again, I'm not a big multiplayer guy, but when I fired up Apex Legends, the ping system, which I know got a lot of attention. I'm so glad you said that. That's exactly what I was thinking. The made ping it, system, dude. Made it so easy for me as like someone who doesn't play Battle Royale or even multiplayer shooters that much to get in there. And I I knew how to like tell my my teammates like, hey, there's a, there's some, there's yes. whatever. There's some ammo here. There's like a- Ammo, enemy, all the- There's the an enemy over there. Beautiful. And yeah. I didn't need a mic either, which to me was like, I don't like yes. using mics. So for those reasons, I got to hand it to Apex. Um, and I do, again, I think Tetris 99 is the other standout on this list. Uh, yeah. Not because it's um, the, necessarily the best game on this list, but it is so creative. Like when I yeah. heard Battle Royale Tetris, I was like, oh, hell yeah, I'm definitely playing that. And sure enough, <laughs> I, I killed a lot of hours in it. Um, but it, I eventually felt like it was just kind of mindless fun. So I, I put it aside. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I'd have to give it to Apex on this one. Okay. Um. All right, so the last category that we're going to go over on my channel here is a big one, uh, second biggest, I think, to Game of the Year, and that's Best Game Direction. And this is interesting because it kind of gives us a peek into what the judges might have been thinking were the best game uh, or is the best game of the year. So the nominees here are Control, Death Stranding, Resident Evil 2, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, and The Outer Wilds. Um, and... There's nothing here really that surprised me or that I thought after thinking about it was necessarily missing except for Smash Brothers. Like that is Sakurai's baby and he has, I mean, as the director of that game, how can you not give the nod to him as for best game direction? I don't know. It's such, it's so debatable because I thought of that too before they even announced the nominees. I'm like, Smash might get nominated for direction, but the thing about game direction, at least in my opinion, is that there's key there's a key difference between it and game of the year because game of the year it's kind of like the whole package of just everything what was like the best produced game this year game direction is specifically for kind of like its style and maybe innovation and like what what is something that it did to stand out this year you know and so with that in mind i was thinking like well smash if i thought of anything it would be specifically for just the collaboration that's it like, just the collaboration is, like, the big direction in it that should be acknowledged. But uh, I didn't know. I wasn't too confident. So I'm not too surprised about this. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. I mean, I might be kind of conflating best director with best direction. Because um, you are right that, you know, best game direction definitely includes all those factors. And, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a really good point to make. Um, I still was kind of disappointed not to see it here. Um, or for that matter, and I was believe me, that was like my favorite of all the games nominated in all these categories. That's my favorite game. So don't get me wrong. <laughs> Remember when we were talking the other day, I was, you, when you brought up that smash was eligible to be nominated, I was like, my first reaction was, Oh, that game's going to just clean up. And I am surprised <laughs> not to see it nominated up. more than it was. <laughs> I actually think here that death stranding, I think will win this category, not because I think that it's deserving, but I think that the industry is, um, this might be controversial to say, but I think the industry is kind of infatuated with Hideo Kojima. And You're not alone I there. think that I'll just let you know. the the build up to this game, the anticipation, the hype, uh, was so enormous that I feel like all of that would be kind of for nothing in some people's eyes if Death Stranding didn't get recognized in some shape or form. I don't think it'll win game of the year, but maybe best game direction is a way that the industry can kind of you know, pat Hideo Kojima on the back. And he should <laughs> he should get recognized for, I think, his vision, whether or not people like it And he is, though, by not. getting nominated. Yeah, You know, that's, that's the thing. Even if he doesn't win it, he got nominated. So that's nothing to, like, slap chat. He got nominated for Best Game Direction and, in my opinion, a great year for games. So that's that's saying something. Yep, um, yeah. Is there, like, a should, like, a should win from you? Well... I would probably say, uh, that's tough, you know. I could, make a case, I could make a case for all these. So control, well. Yes, yeah. Control, I'm probably going to leave that one out of this. Resident yeah. Evil 2, I think you could make the case because, like I said, 
that game, I think, showed the industry and gamers uh, more than any other game how a game should get remade. If you're going to remake a game, yes. do it like this. Uh, Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice, all the reasons we said earlier, that just is a really brilliant I don't want to say Souls-like, but that's what it is. But beyond that, it's just a great mm -hmm. video game. Um, it's really hard to pick apart anything that From Software does. And then The Outer Wilds is unlike anything else that has been nominated this entire – in all of these categories. Yeah. It's so unique. So uh, kind of going through it right now after talking about it, I'd have to either give it to – I think what should win it and what will win it, I think I'm actually going to stick with Death Stranding, even despite what I okay. said about Kojima. Like I think that <laughs> it's so, it's there's it's nothing very unique. Like it. It's, it's UPS very unique. simulator. It's, no other game has done that before. <laughs> and it's it's very deliberate too. Uh, and what I mean by yes, that is everything yeah. in that game I feel is on purpose. And like Kojima made what he wanted to make, and he he didn't listen like for better or worse. I don't think he listened to other people telling him what that game should be. He knew what he wanted to make, and he did it. I I'm gonna give it to Death Stranding. What about you? That's another, and that's another key point is like, how does this, does this feel like it is being molded in somebody else's vision or does it feel like this is very intended? And that's something big for game direction. Um, and so that's why, like, while I personally feel that Death Stranding was nominated for a bit too many things this year, I, I, I understand why it's here. I really do. And, and, and yeah, and I think the should, or I think the will win is probably going to be death stranding because honestly reasons you already said i think um the industry just you know we love kojima and i'm gonna not say they i'm gonna say we we love kojima he's he's such a recognized figure and he he deserves to be recognized which he is by just getting a nomination even if he doesn't win it um but i just think that there's so much love for the man and uh i don't know about the game but i get the favor i get the feeling that there will be a bit of favoritism that um the game i'm not saying doesn't earn it but like you know because it is it's a very unique game and that's why it's here and i understand that um my should personally i think i'm gonna say is resident evil 2 because like you said that's how we've seen remakes before and remakes are very different from remasters but remakes you have to make an entirely like new game from the ground up that is based off something but even with Link's awakening which was a remake too it was incredibly like following exactly what that original game did, but Resident Evil 2, it completely changed a lot of things, like the camera angles and all these, even art direction. Like, like they had to make a completely new game, and uh, and it's and it's for specifically game direction, you know, influence, unique and stuff. I think Resident Evil 2, um, me personally, anyways, I feel it should be recognized for how it handled the remake, and we'll see that next year with Final Fantasy VII. But yeah. Um, but, uh, so yeah, I think will win Death Stranding, should win Resident Evil 2. Awesome. So that wraps it up. Those are the six uh, nomination categories we're talking about here on Quest Mode. Um, for everyone watching, again, like we said before, uh, there is a whole other video with six other categories, including Game of the Year that we're talking about over on Tony's channel at uh, Samurai KBG on YouTube. So head on over there. Check it out. Yeah, I'll put the link in the description. I'll probably put it up on the screen somewhere too so you guys have it. Um, definitely check out his content. All his other stuff is fantastic as well, especially if you're also interested in movies and anime. It's not just video games over there. Um, and he posts a lot more frequently than I do, so there's that as well. But uh, yeah, Tony, I just want to thank you so much for coming onto the channel. Um, I feel like I did a lot of the talking here, uh, so hopefully you felt like you got your... Uh, your two no, cents I got these. to say my piece, and I'm really glad we did this, and I hope everybody listens to both our opinions. It's not just mine. It's both of our opinions for part two of what the other six categories we will discuss. Absolutely. So, yeah. Thank you again so much. And uh, as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. If you want to keep up with me and all the games I'm playing, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I, I want to remind everyone to never... Stop questing. We'll see you next time.